Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we are doing another Napoleon Total War Battle. Online battle where me and Hale fight Carl von Clausewitz and Baku. And I like to call this one Getting Finessed because we get truly finessed in this battle. We get beaten roundly and that is mainly my fault, I'm not going to lie. But of course, I'm not one of those YouTubers that only posts videos of them being good and winning. I wanted to post this one basically to show you how to play if you're play if you're watching these guys or how not to play if you're watching me and i was very very rusty with my micro and awful in fact with my, my my micro here and i was too busy messaging up in the corner to really spot anything early game or do anything worthwhile but first things first let's go through the army composition so let's go through hales who has a king's german legion dragoons and a standard dragoons Look at these King German Legion guys, awesome. As well as two uh, unique Hussar units. So you have the 10th Hussars, absolutely stunning unit, look at that. And you have the 15th Hussars with their fancy moustaches ready to go in the action. On top of that, he has two unique foot units. He has the 42nd foot, the Black Watch. A very scary, good unit in melee, this guy's. Very good unit in melee. And the 88th foot, the Connaught Rangers. On top of this, he has three rifle units ready to go. Some nice skirmisher options there. And um, two King's German Legion foot. These guys hailing from Hanover, I believe. And four foot units. So a decent, decent army there with two nine-pounder foot artilleries ready to go and pound the enemy into oblivion my army very similar composition three light dragoons the standard light dragoon and one standard normal dragoon i had a five inch howitzer but not for long and a six pounder horse artillery on top of that we've got two units of the elite foot guards and five units of the standard foot with Four, uh, two units of light foot and two units of rifles. So a bit of a, you know, uh, mix match of light troops there. And led by Major General Picton, who unfortunately, he's got his top hat on, but doesn't have his great coat on from the, um, from the Battle of Waterloo. Now let's look at Carl's army. One guard chasseur a cheval, beautiful unit. Look at them, ready to go. Two units of the standard Chasseur à cheval. In terms of artillery, he's got two six-inch howitzers, howitzers over here. He's got an old guard and a young guard. Where are these guys? Old guard, fantastic unit. A young guard. Um, he's got an 18th infantry regiment of the uh, regiment of line called the Brave, which is a unique unit, fantastic unit, cool-looking unit. And a Polish Legion and four Swiss foot with one Fusilier of the line. Uh, with his lights, he has two uh, Voltigeurs and two Chasseurs, I believe. No, four Voltigeurs, sorry, four Voltigeurs. And he is led just by a standard, standard general. Now let's look at Baku's army, which is a pretty standard six inch howitzers, four Chasseurs. Seven Fusiliers of line, one Swiss foot, and three Chasseurs à cheval, plus two Chavaux, uh, let me say, Chavaux Légère Lancers, which are a decent Lancer unit, very good on the charge. As you can see, Carl has already sent his cavalry forward to secure these crossings, and I've hardly even moved, like I've been so slow at moving. And this is a big error by me early on. Extremely large error. Terrible error. And he gets rid of that 5-inch howitzer before I've even reacted. Which was terrible, terrible, terrible micro by me. And you can see I'm bringing my Light Dragoons in. But it's not really going to make a difference. These guys are going to get shredded. So no. It was a terrible, terrible error by me. Wanted to bring the foot in to try and get rid of these guys. But this becomes a massive, massive mess really. Um, because my cavalry and my infantry can't kill these guys for quite a while. And that's probably because they are guards. On top of this, he's brought these two cavalry units around this side. So he charged the infantry into the cavalry. But you never really want to do this. And I was very, very rusty in this battle, as you can tell. I was terrible. 
Um, because cavalry is always better than infantry uh, at fighting infantry. So we managed to bring some more light dragoons in to deal with these guys. But it's too late. That 5 inch howitzer is gone. And you can see these guys are fighting very well. They're not really dying. I was surprised by that. But of course, as you can see, these guys are over here. Hale's kind of standing off. These guys are coming forward powerfully. And what I really wanted to do was kind of take this side of the map. And at that point, this side of the map's lovely. It's open. You can have line battles. But you can also flank around anywhere you want. These areas here and over here. So if you take this area of the map, you're in a very dominant position. But unfortunately, because of my massive micro errors, we just didn't have the time to do so. And as you can see, I thought I got these guys routing, but we didn't. Uh, so I had to charge the cavalry back in. So this battle's already started with a bang. And as you can see, he's already got his half his army across this side. And I've hardly even moved. Like, very, very poor from me. But that is some serious micro-efficiency on his part. And he is holding, holding this center here with his voltageurs and his Swiss foot ready to go. The artillery are coming forward, getting ready to get in position. Hale's nine-pounder artillery, putting down the pain on some of these guys. You know, only got a couple of hits at the minute, but will do some decent damage later on, especially with canister shot. But as you can see, he has just got the jump on me completely, and I'm just focused on getting rid of those guard chasseurs at this point. And at this point, I was like, God damn, he has screwed me over already. And he's bringing in some more chasseurs ready to go. But as you can see, I am moving my troops now eventually. Nice, slow retreat. And initially, it was the plan to hold them off at these two crossings. Uh, but as you can see, with this army here, it's not going to be viable to do that. So he was thinking about a charge, but he can see me moving my troops now. So he's going to go out far right. Far right. And me and Hale are bringing across our cavalry to try and combat his. Try and make this bit more of an even fight. Because as you can see, we are losing already. All my fault, of course. But here comes the guard chasseur. No, the chasseur a cheval. The normal chasseur a cheval. And here is my cavalry. And we are ready to charge him if it goes well. But this chasseur unit of che chasseur a cheval, everyone who plays Napoleon Online knows, is one of the most OP like units in the game uh, for its price. Like its price tag is ridiculous for how much um, how much damage it does with its pistols. No one can really compete with that. You have the mounted Kader uh, cavalry as the Ottomans. I believe the Russians might get some of these pistol-wielding cavalry units. But no, it is a really, really, really strong unit. And at this point, I knew I was between a rock and a hard place. Like, whatever happens, he's got this section of the army here. Going to be pushing on me down here. While he's firing at us with the 6-inch howitzer. So at this point, we kind of thought it's time... To maybe retreat a little bit. He was bringing some of his infantry up here. Ready to combat. We had our cavalry ready to go over here as well. But now it's just a bit of a standoff. And already you can see we are encircled. And this is a situation you never want to be in in Napoleon. You can get out of it. You can get out of it. Uh, but yes. It's very tough to do so. As the 6 inch howitzer shots. Rain down upon us. At this point, I was kind of like, God damn, we are, we are screwed really. <laughs> but we will fight on till the end and see what we can do. I brought my six pounder horse artillery up to try and uh, do some damage on these guys. As you can see, going to be ineffective as I was most of this battle. <laughs> Over here, it's just a standoff. Baku just has a few units of fusiliers. But he is moving most of his troops across into the center in here. And these guys really don't need to enter the battle yet. Because the whole battle is over this side really. Ready to go. Um, and this is a very good tactic. You don't need to, you know, apply pressure all at once. It can work very well for you. Um, but if Carl over here 
get some nice, decent pressure onto us, uh, we shall have a uh, very, very, uh, you know, difficult time. And if he then, then puts the pressure on here, we won't know where to go. And as you can see, another huge micro error by me. I didn't put these guys on canister shot. And he got his chasseur a cheval into them already very quickly. And got rid of that cannon. Which is a massive shame because this six pounder horse artillery would have been very useful later on in the battle. Uh, we do manage to rout these guys. But of course, as you can see, got rid of those cannons altogether. Which is not what we want to do. And on top of that, I'm chasing his chasseur a cheval out of here. He has got these stakes down, but we managed to sneak past them and get into the fight with these guys. And as you can see, he does have more cavalry over here. These more chasseurs, three more chasseurs, Ashaval, and I believe they are Baku's, not his. Um, but yeah, we really wanted to just get rid of this cavalry here. But as you can see, Hale doesn't spot these spikes, which is a very unfortunate. And a lot of his troops die in the charge there, going over these spikes. So a couple of micro errors from us. I also don't spot the spike. Oh, do I spot them? I, sp mm, I don't spot them either. So a lot of my troops die on that. It's really hard to see them when you're looking this way, especially with the smoke. And we were looking like this. And you can just spot them last second. Our men are running so as you, can, as you can see, we threw away nearly all our cavalry already, which is terrible, terrible, terrible news for us. Terrible news for our army. And these Dragoons are not doing well against the Chasseur Acheval. And he just brings his ch Chasseur Acheval in just to shoot us. They don't even need to get into the fight. They can just shoot. And they are going to shred our cavalry, shred them to pieces, unfortunately for us. But we do still have those Hussar regiments. But as you can see, he now heavily outnumbers us in cavalry. Our men are running for he outnumbers us basically everywhere. Basically everywhere. Um, so some big, big, big errors early on from us. Big micro errors. Mainly my fault. Uh, neither of us spotted these spikes. They're just really hard to see with the smoke and everything going on. And you press attack over here. Looking over here. They're just very hard to spot. So yeah, you have to be close in. But yeah, we did, uh, did struggle initially with these guys. And as you can see, because we're close to the edge of the map. No chance for them coming back from routing. They just ran straight off. Which is also another crucial thing. So over here, we knew the game was kind of up over here. We needed to retreat. So I slowly wanted to retreat my guys back. And as you can see, he is using his voltages to a decent, decent standard. Getting in, taking some pot shots, and then leaving. Uh, and at this point, we were like, god damn, let's go. Let's get the hell out of dodge. Because we are not going to be winning anything if we stay, stick around here at all. As you can see, these Light Dragoons did come back from routing. But apart from that, it's pretty much nothing else. And as we're retreating these guys, we know that we've got to abandon this crossing over here and allow them to flood across the river while they're just holding over here and not actually attacking. Oh, so, some big errors, some big errors early on. But here comes another big cav charge. This is going to be a big one for us. We really needed to win this if we had any chance of winning the rest of the battle. And as you can see, it's not going to go too well for us with these Chasseur a Cheval up here. Ready to go. Here we are in full, full flight. Getting away from the enemy as fast as we can. And as you can see, we were just trying to hold this position here. Try and hold this line as best as possible. But these Hussars, unfortunately... Getting kind of shredded by the chasseurs. This chasseur is losing. But with this other chasseur firing into us. Really, really tough battle to win. And I didn't want to charge my cavalry in. Because I knew if we lost this one. Which we would most likely lose at this point. You know, we ain't got, we ain't got any cavalry left at all. And I've lost all my, all my, inf uh, all my cannons. Everything. And as you can see, he was bringing his 9-pounder foot artillery across, ready to do some decent damage on us. These foot guards were getting targeted by the, by the howitzers. Getting smashed. Getting smashed by howitzers. They've taken a lot of damage. And this, is, this damage is not from being shot, guys. This is from the howitzers. So those howitzers have done a very decent job. And as you can see, straight after we retreat, he floods across with his troops. 
ready to encircle us even more. Even more. So at this point, we're just in a running battle, retreating battle back. We still have a good chance of winning. We still have a lot of troops left. But the odds are getting slimmer and slimmer every single second uh, that we retreat. And we got ready for some lovely line combat here. As you can see, he's got his nine pound of foot artillery up there. Where is the other one? This one is there in place. Not quite moving yet, but soon we're going to move it up here. Ready to do some decent damage on the enemy. Yes, the, their cavalry was just relentless. Relentless. Relentlessly charging us down. But they don't have that much cavalry left. We have basically none. They do have these two fresh units right in the back. And they are going to come in handy for them very later. He's still holding across here with a decent amount of troops. But when he sees we've abandoned the crossings, he is going to flood across here. And do some more decent damage on our troops, on our flank. But at this point, we're kind of chilling. We, we know we've, we've made some errors. We know, mainly me, I've been screwed. I was awful. But... We know we can still win if we play well. He manages to get in square to deal with those chasseurs. So those chasseurs are going to get pounded. And do a de we do a decent job of holding them off. But while he does that, he brings these voltagers forward. And he charges chasseurs into my rifles. Which was very annoying. Because those rifles do not like getting charged. I can, show I can tell you that for free. And at this point, he was just, you know... Toying with us, getting these voltagers forward, shooting our lines as fast as he could. Um, so we're bringing some more foot up, ready to deal with them. Um, and then, you know, retreating back, which was incredible micro. I don't think I've ever seen someone micro that well and that hard for that long. But as you can see, he's getting his cannons limbered up and ready to go. And we are bringing some troops back to support the cannons. And we're just in a holding, you know, retreating pattern right now to try and get close to the cannons and do some damage with them with canister shot. But as you can see, these guys have come straight across. We've got the foot guards here ready to face them, but they are basically, you know, chasseurs. So, <clears throat> so they are basically um, going to outrange me and start taking pot shots earlier than we can shoot at them. But here he retreats. Which is an interesting tactic because basically he had all the power at this point. All the advantage. And he retreats and waits for this more troops to come. So guys, you don't need to go and blitz constantly. Blitz straight at the enemy. Um, like you don't need to be blitzing all the time. And this is something that me as a Rome Total War player kind of struggle with. Um, I'm always wanting to blitz always wanting to uh, blitz as fast as possible uh, get through the enemy um, but no in Napoleon it's better to wait sometimes it's better to be patient but as you can see he's got a large amount of troops over this side now ready to try and beat us and flank us and as you can see we are moving back towards the old cannons ready to get some canister shots in Backed all the way up to this crossing. And he's just threatening with these two units of fusiliers. He's not really, um, you know, pushing with them. But he doesn't need to. He really doesn't need to. He's got the setup ready. He's got everything ready. And they are bringing their six-inch howitzers through as well. Which is fantastic. Good move. Ready to take some more shots. So that's another reason for them to be patient. But as you can see, we're moving kind of slowly. Nice and slowly forward, backwards. We don't need to be in a rush. But we are retreating. We are getting pushed back. And at this point, I knew the game was up over here. These guys just got hit. These guys were getting shredded by these chasseurs, actually, because there was four units of them and only one of these foot guards and shredded by the cannons. So we decided to move the rest of these guys back and retreat even more. So we are basically, or I am on my side, in full flight of the enemy right now full flight of the enemy and you can see this nine pounder pounding these guys into oblivion and we knew that this was our last shot our only shot of survival getting these nine pounders on canister shot and shooting the enemy as closely 
uh, as we can get to them. Look at that. Some good shots coming in. But it's not really killing that many. That's the annoying thing with round shot in this game. Sometimes it just blows people away and doesn't kill them. But, yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, yeah, you want to kind of target units in the side where they're more vulnerable to getting more, more people killed. Or the thicker blocks of units, of course. But, as you can see, we are moving backwards. Hale decided to come up this way and around to try and deal with this little force. Um, but at this moment, we're, that's just a delaying tactic to try and get these guys onto the cannons. But this foot guard, as you can see, only 19 of them left. They took an absolute hammering down here. And they really didn't do much damage. Look at that. They... Yeah, they only killed like half of one of these chasseur units and hardly anyone else. So not a very good situation over here. And that was quite surprising to me. Like you'd think foot guards should beat chasseurs in a all-out fight. But they didn't seem to. They didn't seem to. But there was four units of them and that was why. So here we are ready and behind the cannons. Nicely ready to go. As you can see, he is doing very well with his voltageurs, keeping us on our toes, taking shots, microing fantastically, taking shots that he can take, and then pushing us back. And he was microing us just out of existence, basically, just ruining us in terms of that. So much quicker, so much smoother, and making a lot better decisions, I would say, especially than me. So <laughs> he was finessing us pretty hard with this micro. Or finessing me, at least, anyway. But at this point, Hale's still got a lot of troops. I've not got that many. But uh, one thing here, though. We, we were shooting on canister shot. But canister shot doesn't work, as you can see, outside of its range of impact. It's not Empire. I believe on Empire it does. But on uh, Napoleon, it doesn't work outside of its, its impact range. So we really should have been on round shot here. Because look, it doesn't kill anyone outside of its uh, actual range, which would probably be about here. So it will kill people when they get into range. But at this point, it's not doing any damage. This light foot was doing nothing. It was very annoying. He was just out fighting us with everything that he had. Outdoing me in every single facet of the game. <laughs> But as you can see, guys, it's a good learning experience for me especially and for you guys to see how a very good player plays. And you can see they don't... They play fast when they need to. But they don't play fast all the time. Like, that initial move of getting across over here and taking out my cannons was very fast and like a Blitzkrieg effect. But after that, they consolidated. They got the troops where they needed to go first. And then attacked. They didn't, you know, carry on pushing with less troops than they knew they could win with. They carried on pushing with as many troops as they, you know, um, uh, with as many troops as they needed. But they, you know, they, they waited around. They didn't have to go. But that's what happens when you get that first advantage in the battle. When you lose your cannon straight away, they know they've got a big advantage right now. So they don't need to be... To take, um, they don't need to be extremely fast right now. They can just wait. They've got advantage with lights. They've got advantage with infantry. They've got advantage with cavalry. They've got advantage with pretty much everything. Uh, but the cavalry aren't really in the battle just yet. But they are just waiting around. But you can see these troops don't even need to get into the fight yet. But at this point, I was just trying to bring my rifles forward and do some damage on these guys because they were very much annoying me. Because they were shredding us. But as you can see, he does manage to bring some guys back round. And they, you can see, they were just out of range of the cannons. Those, those shots are not actually doing any damage. Yeah, getting so annoyed by these voltageurs that I wanted to bring some guys forward. So if we brought, the problem was here, if we brought our foot forward, he would just bring his foot forward and, sh and shred them. If we brought our light infantry forward, he would just bring his light infantry forward and shred us. So he was just out microing us at everything, um, which was very impressive, very impressive. This, you can see this line, it's a little flanking force, uh, just putting enough pressure on our lines and bringing down, look at these troops, 
These foot guys have basically no troops left. And they've hardly even been in a line battle. They've just been getting picked off by voltageurs. Which is crazy. Really, really impressive over there. And that little push is just constantly making us micro. Constantly making us second guess what we want to do. Look at that. Look at that. That's the thumbnail right there, isn't it? Probably when they get a bit closer. And we can see the whites in their eyes. That's what they always used to say to line regiment, line infantry regiments. Shoot when you can see the whites in their eyes. Because muskets were so inaccurate. But as you can see, he brings those chasseurs forward over here. Ready to deal some damage. And he's just just shredding us at this point like we <laughs> we're in full flight we don't know what to do we're getting overwhelmed in every single area but as you can see these cannons are going to start doing some serious damage now that they are in range and we really needed to target so these fusiliers over here but yes you can see this voltageur is just wreaking absolute havoc on our guys havoc on our lines We really just couldn't compete with it. As you can see, look at this. Cannons ready to go. Ready to fire. And now eventually doing some serious damage. Look at that. In the face of cannon fire. And we brought these troops up here to actually shoot upon the enemy. To actually do some damage. Now this is Hale bringing his troops up here, ready to actually do some serious damage and try and beat back some of these guys. But at this point, we know we're, we're surrounded. We're ruined. Like, we are really, really struggling. That's the thumbnail right there. Or if we get one where they, they're getting shot, that would be excellent. But yeah, the Swiss foot marching into the face of cannon fire. Ready to shoot, ready to go. Look how close they're getting. Targeting this unit. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful shooting. Beautiful shooting there. Some lovely gameplay. Some lovely... And he decides at this point... That was too close for comfort. We don't need to be pushing. We've got these guys on the ropes anyway. So he decides to take a step back and retreat. And as you can see, this is another... Example of a very decent player. You don't need to be pushing constantly. Even though he's got us on the ropes. And he knows that it's very likely that they can win. They don't need to be pushing anymore. They don't need to be pushing all the way through. But yeah, as you can see, we are getting quite roundly finessed here. Especially me, of course. Nice. Nice. Very nice gameplay. Very nice gameplay to watch. But the Lions are fighting it out. These 40-second foot of Black Watch are taking a pounding over here. Connaught Rangers doing some decent job. We did manage to get some good pushback. Or Hale managed to get some good pushback on this side. But that's with the uh, with the, uh, with the the cavalry on the way. And I decided to try and bring my cavalry across. To try and deal with these guys. But again, I was just too late. My micro was too slow. But they do route just in time. He really doesn't want to have to deal with these guys. Look at those shots going off. What a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic bit of gameplay. And this side, as you can see, we are starting to do some decent damage. Routing troops, especially with the canister shot. But he knows it's only a matter of time before our, our right flank crumbles. Their left flank. So even with this canister shot, um, you know, they're probably still going to be able to overwhelm us. Yes. Retreating back because a lot of those troops were retreating. Doing some very decent, very decent damage, that canister shot. Fantastic. And this is where my six inch, my six pounder... Oh, look at these guys. Down to 34 and still standing. Well done, guys. That's brave of you. Uh, this is where my six pound horse artillery would have really come in handy. If I could have like got it up here or something and brought my troops back, we would have been able to hold back this side as well. Um, but no, unfortunately not. I freaking missed it and micro terribly. 
And you can see how close the six pounder howitzers are now. Oh, excuse me, guys. Just had to sneeze. Um, we can see how close the six pounder howitzers are now. They are just going to start wreaking havoc on our lines. Targeting all the right people. Doing some serious, serious damage. And at this point, we're pretty much broken on nearly all the sides. And he brings in fresh units to come back into the fight. These are the units that broke initially, that, that were fa 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 uh, facing the cannon fire. I can't speak today. Um, so he brings in fresh units to try and plug those gaps. But of course, of course, we already know they were kind of already shredded. And he's got light superiority, which is so powerful. So powerful. And there's the old guard. The old guard coming into the fight. Fighting everyone that moves. Look at them go. Firing into our lines. Doing some very decent damage. Very, very good unit. And over here, the young guard as well. Firing perfectly into the lines. Oh yeah, doing a very good job. As you can see, he's just outside of range of the canister shot now. So it's actually not killing anyone. Uh, which is unfortunate. And he's just waiting. He knows he's pushing us back on this flank. We actually had kind of like a mass route, really. Um, so we decide to move a few units back. And he is just flanking us fully. And he knows if he can flank around us here... That this cannon, these cannons are going to have to get abandoned. And they won't be able to do the damage that they're doing right now. Uh, one of them's down to three as well from those uh, from those shots from the uh, howitzer. So he is just slowly, slowly breaking these units down. Taking the sting out of their battle. Nice. So he is flanking round and he has gone all the way round us here. This line is just completely collapsed. We just really can't deal with anything. And everyone starts to fold and run under the pressure. Everyone. Um, and as you can see, they have a pretty healthy army left. We basically have nothing left. Not much anyway. You know, a couple of units of King's German Legion foot. Hale's still got in the fight. Um, I've still got this one foot guards over here. But apart from that... We're pretty much gone. And these cannons do start start to rout. Uh, because of the fire that they're under from the howitzers. But you can see they're doing some decent damage still. Look at that. See whether they get another shot off before the charge comes in. I'm not sure. Oh! Jesus, look at that. Fantastic. Brutal. But well, he's just firing upon his own troops really now. Yeah, no... no. Ah, no shots are going to go off. One shot off. But the cannons have been silenced at this point. And we know the writing is on the wall for this for this battle. And he is fully flanking us here. Look at that. Fully flanking us. I don't know why this unit's focusing the old guard. Probably because they're so good. But at least we managed to get those old guard to rout. You can see his troops are so much healthier. So in such a better position than ours. One of these 9-pounders does come back from routing. He's going to get back in the action. Get ready to fire some more canister shot. But it's just not enough. Look how many troops he's got left. They've both got left. So that's Baku. And of course, you've got to remember, he has those fusiliers of the line across here as well. And at this point, they know that they can cross the river without too much resistance. And bring the hammer down on this final death knoll for us over here. Foot guards versus the young guard. The young guard are going to win that. They have more troops. More troops ready to go. But we do have some troops coming back from routing, but not many. As you can see, we are getting fully enveloped over here. Fully, fully enveloped. But yes, fantastic battle. Fantastic battle. Good fun to be a part of. And really just, you know, shows how good these players were. Baku and uh, Carl working together. And I do apologize to Hale, my teammate. <laughs> For being so trash. Because I was very, very trash in this battle. But of course I'm going to bring it to you. Because guys, it was an epic battle. And on top of that, it shows you guys how good players play. And how they play. And how pretty average players play like me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, really fun battle. Really good fun. And finally, you can see the trap is closing. 
They've finally enveloped us all. Look at these lines of dead troops over here. These are all French troops dying from canister shot. But you can see the lines of British troops as well over here dying. Look at that. Look at the dead bodies everywhere. Filled with dead bodies all the way from over here. The cavalry fights at the start. My cannons getting killed down here at the start. Cavalry dying on the stakes. Oh, don't mention that. Don't mention that. The initial engagement over here. It was a big wide ranging battle. What an epic battle it was to be a part of. Good fun. And the final few death notes are going to come in now. On everyone routes eventually. Yep, yeah, bringing these guys up just to get a few more kills, you know. Get a few more kills in before the end. And these poor foot units know that death awaits them unless they run. They run from the marauding French army that has shredded them. Shredded them to pieces. And the final engagement's going to come over here. The young guard versus these guys. But even at this point in the battle when he knows that you know, he's basically won, he still retreats them a little bit. So that these Regiment of the Brave can, can, come on, catch them up. So he doesn't even force them in, you know, quickly. Just to finish the battle, he's still microwing at this point. Just shows you how, you know, how much, how much thought uh, goes into the battle. No emotion. And these guys are just like, uh, we can, we can reload, can't we? We can reload. Oh, God, no. The General... Probably Juno or something. Marshal Juno coming in to kill him. Go on, Juno. But yeah, this foot unit really, really struggling here. Didn't manage to get them in square. That might have been because they were below 50 already. This foot guard has come back. But of course, it's not going to make a difference. Yeah, at this point he's retreating as well, which was quite of surprising. I thought he would just go in for the kill. But he knows these units are pretty damaged, so he might rout. But there is no chance that we are going to win this battle anymore. You can see how many units he's got left. And uh, how many we have. Which is just not much. And of course we have to form square here. Try and kill this general which we managed to do. Yeah these guys breaking. The foot guard breaking again. And look at those howitzer shots coming in. On these squares. Finally, finally ready to destroy us. The final troops. The final troops, and they all decide that maybe today is not the day to die. <laughs> They've seen a lot of their friends die. And that is it, guys. So as you can see, I was the worst by quite considerably, quite a considerable margin. Hale actually got a very good amount of kills. That was fantastic from him. A lot of them, I'm guessing, from the canister shop, but we can't actually see... His canister shots there. His uh, unit results there. But Karl von Clausewitz bringing the hammer. Batu there just waiting and bringing the hammer down at the end. Finally getting the flank in. Karl, very, very, both of these guys, very good players. Hale, a very good player as well. But I was the odd one out. I was the weak link here. But as I say, guys, wanted to bring you this battle. I got finessed. But I wanted to show you. You know, how a good player plays and how not to play against them. And I hope you really enjoy because I thought it was a pretty epic battle on the Dresden map. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Please do like this video. If we can get up to 20 likes, that would be amazing, guys. So thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you all again on the next video.